Good morning, Lama Jigme of the Buddha Joy Meditation School. Last night, an acquaintance and I were reminiscing of our music from the late 60s and early 70s. What came to mind was a song I haven't uh, heard since um, I was a little kid riding in the back seat of my parents' car. The name of the song is One Tin Soldier Rides Away, and it was made, it was made famous by the movie Billy Jack. Not a cinematic masterpiece, but lots of cool ideas. That, the movie's cool, I'm sorry, the song is cool for several reasons. One, neat chord progression. Number two, lyrics that'll make you cry. But number three, it applies, has direct application to the contemporary progressive movement and especially the animal liberation movement, which is near and dear to all of us plant-munching animal lovers. As you know, every song has uh, verses and chorus. Let's start with the chorus. Don't worry, I won't sing. The chorus is, go ahead, cheat a neighbor, go ahead, kill a friend, do it in the name of heaven, you'll be justified in the end. This was written in after Kent State, after war protesters were murdered upon, unarmed, peaceful, singing, flower-wielding protesters were f murdered by armed uh, state militia. Oy vey. So, this chorus is, is worded sarcastically, ironically, the De derisively. It's mocking the fact that people do dark, ugly things without having the honesty to say, I do dark, ugly things because I'm a dark, ugly person. I'm a villain. Most people say, no, I'm not a villain. Look, I'm dripping myself with a flag. I'm, drip I'm, covering, I'm dripping myself with Bible verses. Look at me, I'm a patriot. Look at me, I'm a saint. No. Ain't gonna happen. Uh, a dead man once wrote that patriotism is the last refuge of the scoundrel. That was, of course, a paraphrase. Perhaps you'll be good enough to put the exact quote in the comments below. One of the things I love about Darth Vader from Star Wars is that he, he does not try to be a... He does not lie about who he is. Hello, my name is Darth Vader. I kick kittens, I punch puppies, I boil babies, I'm a villain, I'm going to do bad things. He's unapologetically villainous. If we were all that honest, our hearts couldn't take it. We would have a crisis of conscience. Why do we, very few of us were born and raised vegan, most of us were raised omnivorous, myself included. In the past, why did I eat animal parts? Would well, I drink animal milk or eat animal milk products or eat chicken eggs or fish eggs? Two reasons. Either A, I thought in the long term it would benefit me as an athlete, or two, I thought it would give me pleasure in the moment. And oh yes, I also wore leather and enjoyed fur. Full omnivore. Why did I do those things? Because in the moment they, I found them gratifying, or in the moment I thought I hoped they would be gratifying. And so, whether I knew it or not, what I was willing to say is I will, tour, I will pay people through my consumer choices. This is money I'm flapping, invisible money. I will pay people to enslave and molest and mutilate and torture and murder animals for my temporary fleeting pleasure. The irony of which is that animal products in the body of humans is a carcinogen. It won't make us healthy. It won't, you know, it'll, if it gives us pleasure, it's fleeting pleasure, which is dramatically offset by the agony of cancer and heart disease and diabetes and um, all the other things. But on a deep level, on a dark level, there's a knowledge that 
our self-destructive indulgences come at the price of others' happiness. This was explored in the McCloskey film, uh, Jupiter Rising, where people would, where, uh, where humans would be slaughtered by the million, or I'm sorry, by the hundreds of thousands to produce one liter of elixir. And the villains of the film would bathe in the stuff, which means they were bathing the life essence of millions of people who were slaughtered wholesale. And the villains justify this by saying, well, their lives are meaningless. Our pleasure gives their lives meaning. How short-sighted, how horrible. So let us cease to justify ourselves with pious, pseudo-philosophical, pseudo-scientific, pseudo-spiritual justifications. Now let's explore the chorus of the song. By the way, I love the song so much, I've put a link to the song in the doodly-doo with lyrics. Okay. There are three verses of the song. First verse sets the setting. There are people in a valley insanely jealous about people living on a hilltop. They've heard legend that the people on the hilltop have gold and they want it. In the second verse, they deliver an ultimatum to the people on the hilltop and say, Hey, give us all your tons of gold. To which the people on the hilltop say, My brothers, my sisters, whatever we have, we will gladly share with you. Whatever knowledge and secrets we possess, we will gladly share with you. In the third verse, we are told that the people in the valley do not accept the sharing. They want to, they, they just want to own it outright, and so they attack the unarmed, uh, pacifist people on top of the hill, slaughter them, butcher them, drench the earth with their blood. When finally they pry open the vault, there is no gold, there are no jewels, all there is is a plaque reading, Peace on Earth goodwill to men. The irony was the treasure that the, that the superstitious valley people had killed for was only transferable by living people. It was not a corporeal treasure, it was a spiritual treasure, a spirit, tre treasure of love, a treasure of peace, a treasure of harmony. Animals do not exist for our pleasure. They exist for their own reasons. They live, die, lose, and win for their own reasons. We can profit from animals, but the most profound, deep profit we can receive is the enrichment we have from respectfully watching them from a distance or through the lens of a natural filmmaker. And they just churn those films out every year, don't they? We don't have to travel to Africa and, you know, hunt and uh, sneak up on elephants, which elephants might find annoying. A crowd crew will do that for us and they'll do it surreptitiously so it's not to bother the creatures. Um, if we do forge a friendship with an animal on the animal's terms, it can be profoundly enriching. Whether that animal is a dog or a cat or a fish or a gopher or a wildebeest, it can be profoundly enriching. The profound benefit we can from forming a peer-to-peer -peer relationship with an animal completely dwarfs whatever temporary pleasure we get from eating them after torturing them. But we never get that profound benefit because we are enslaving, molesting, mutilating, torturing, and murdering them for the sake of our pleasure with our consumer choices. As a political progressive, as an animal rights activist, I love the song Once and Soldier Rides Away. Enjoy it. Knock yourselves out. Be happy. Be healthy. Go vegan. It's the least you can do for the animals, the planet, world hunger, and your own evolution. Good day.